so I'm going to just quickly go over this as well. You know how we did that stream a while ago? Uh, and by a while ago, I mean yesterday, where we talked about uh, the hate speech violation thing that my channel went through and how that was weird. Well, it turns out that I got an email from Google. I got an email from YouTube. Let me go ahead and show you what that email was so that you can see where we are at on there. I'm just trying to figure out where that is. Is it in here? It should be in here. Your video is suitable for all advertisers. That's not the one. Man, I have no idea where it is. Anywho, I got the email from them saying that it turns out that the Steven Anderson video was not hate speech and it was fine. Ah, here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> Hi, Cyrus. We've reviewed your appeal over the following. Video. Words that I used to say and then I became a better person. Steven Anderson is gay. Never before seen footage. After taking another look, we can confirm that your content does not violate our community guidelines. Thank you for your patience while we reviewed this appeal. Our goal is to make sure content doesn't violate our community guidelines. We've reinstated your content. If you appeal for a warning, blah, 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 blah. It's filler shit. That's fine. So basically what this means is that video is back online after several years of being offline on my channel. Just, I am so happy and I'm keeping the original title because you know what? We have to show growth. We have to show that I once upon a time was willing to use just absolutely awful language that I would never use today unless somebody threw an amount of money at me that would help a lot with the upcoming New York trip that also is a trip to Philadelphia to do too many games. I'm not saying that you should throw money at me, uh, but I am saying that, I, that that is a way that makes me say those words. I have grown as a person unless financial gain is considered. But that all said, oh, do I have tiny things? Yes, I do. Thanks to Salem, who is a wonderful artist. But, that all said, that video is back online, but I gotta showcase something else here. And this isn't something that I think I will be able to appeal because I probably did violate this thing. You gotta remember, a lot of my content is looking at somebody else's content and commenting on that content, typically because it's bigoted, but sometimes we'll do little things like watch the weird AI-generated slop videos that technically there should be no copyright to protect for those because it turns out that AI-generated shit can't be copyrighted, but that's, that's besides the point. That's besides a point. Um, also, yeah, active redeems might still be paused. Maybe maybe we unpause those. Uh, but that all said, financial shit aside, I want to show you, if you are an aspiring YouTuber and you want to know exactly how these systems work, um, how YouTube will take down live streams. Now, YouTube is in a very weird spot when it comes to live streams. They want to be like Twitch. They really do. Also, Keegan Snake Eyes, thank you for resubscribing. I appreciate it. They want to be like Twitch. And in so doing, they have initiated a few extra features into YouTube. Being able to clip, being able to raid people at the end of your stream. All kinds of stuff that are far more complicated to do on YouTube than they are on Twitch. These are buttons that we can use on Twitch uh, very easily. All we have to do is go into the creator dashboard of our given stream, go to stream manager, and then uh, kablooey. If I want to raid somebody right now, I click this button and it gives me a bunch of people that I don't fucking know, so then I can hit the following button, and here are the people that I do know. I can send y'all to the Serps, I can send y'all to Trinity, I can send you to Gino, or Hannah Hyrule, or Nami. I can send you to any of these people because they're people that I actually know. Fushi, Jake, these are all decent creators in their own right, and it's very easy for me to send you to people that way. But on YouTube, you don't really have that option. Not not as easily, mind you. But one of the other things that they um, have taken from Twitch is taking down content and you having no absolutely fucking any all idea why. And the way that they do it... Uh, Katini, thank you for resubscri uh, resubscribing with Prime. The way that they do this 
is they'll send you this thing like so this is on my video where i was talking about how grums is an idiot uh the police aren't your friends blah 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 blah, blah. a lot of stuff that i normally talk about on the channel and they said hey something you posted may violate our guidelines to help keep the community safe we've removed it your channel has received a warning now what does that warning mean fuck if i know you can take a training to dismiss the warning, appeal our decision, or do nothing. Learn about the changes in our strikes system. Okay, so part of the training is to look at your content. Now, mind you, this was a live stream, and it lasted for an hour and 33 minutes. Do you know what YouTube isn't doing here? Time stamping. I've heard that apparently they do timestamp some content now to show you where you've made mistakes. And I don't doubt that I made a mistake with this video because I do, in fact, sometimes on stream, watch other people's content and critique it. Or in the case of those really terrible AI videos, just fucking laugh at it. Is it Mr. Bertram? It could be. It might actually be from us watching Mr. Bertram. But here's the fun thing. How am I supposed to know? I could watch an hour and 33 minutes of my own content, which, mind you, for any content creator is one of the most painful things they can ever fucking do. Also, uh, Van Briggs, thank you for redeeming your points for an... And Ravi, thank you for redeeming your points for an Alwal. And now we have a hype train started. That's that's also really cool. Um, Also, a uh, soft announcement. I know that some of the YouTube-only people may not actually like the... Uh, Araras and OOs and all of that being in the final videos, but I'm gonna be honest, I've I, I had that stint where I wanted to improve my content greatly for the end user, and then I realized that that eventually made me kind of lose part of what made my content what it was. Um, so now I've just decided that that stuff is gonna happen anyway. I'm going to put in some blocks so that people can't stun lock me with them, but. Regardless, they are going to be a thing that will be in videos again. I've done my experiment where I've taken them out. It hasn't had any effect on my numbers whatsoever. And I would rather have the bits of community interaction over me being super serious all the time. I'm going to be honest. We're talking about politics from the side of a guy who's just standing behind a cartoon avatar the entire time. A guy who has an avatar that looks like this and a face that looks like this. I'm going to be honest. I take this about as seriously as I can. And you should too. Thank you for the hydrate, Jassa. Also, uh, Heck JP, thank you for the follow as well. That's it. This is something that happened to the Nekosaurus live channel. Uh, maybe go subscribe to the Nekosaurus live channel so that you can watch these videos on YouTube as they are going, uh, as they are live. That said, it says here, uh, what to look out for. We detected third-party content in your live stream that was not corrected following repeated warnings of possible abuse. You may not have intended to include the content, but live streams should be actively monitored by the channel owner, and any potential issues should be corrected. Okay, that's fine. Maybe a timestamp would be cool here. Now, I'm going to assume that if I click to the end of this video, it's going to be the Mr. Bertram stuff. Okay, yep. Yeah! That's me, that's me watching Mr. Bertram. So I know in the back of my head, thanks to my audience telling me what it probably was, I can look at the video and say, oh yeah, that's probably where the violation was. But let's say that my memory wasn't as good as it is. Ravi says sub dono pool or regular dono pool. So the sub dono pool uh, died due to timing restrictions. Turns out uh, running a marathon and then being unable to participate in your own marathon um, doesn't work out very well for anyone involved. So it would be it would be regular regular means where we are. Um, I I may have taken like five hundred dollars from the pool and used it to pay bills. I'm, I'm sorry about that. But that said, looking at here. My criticism for YouTube is very, very simple. It's very, very simple. If a content creator does violate your policies in any way, shape, or form, it would be very helpful for us if you would timestamp the content so that we don't have to go rooting through, in this case, an hour and a half worth of a live stream of our own content in order to figure out where we violated the copyright. 
Now, after this, you can do you can take a policy training or submit an appeal. I'm not going to submit an appeal because in this particular case, Robbie says it's your money. Use it when you need it. Yes, I know. But if my stream, if if viewers on my stream send me money going, hey, this is going to go towards your credit debt. And I go, OK, and then I spend it on mortgage. I feel bad. Like, or if I have to spend it on groceries, I feel bad because regardless of whether it's it going to a place that it needs to go, it's not going to the place I originally intended it to go. And that sucks. Jessa says it would be helpful if you uniformly uh, applied your policies, YouTube. I, I agree that it would be that would be helpful. But my thing this is I'm fairly certain in this case that a case can be made that I did, in fact, violate YouTube's policies. 100%. However, if it were not for my audience, I would not have the spoons to root through an hour and a half of my own money. Not money. Well, I read the chat. An hour and a half of my own money, but an hour and a half of my own content. There we go. I normally would not have the spoons to root through an hour and a half of my own content after the fact when it's a live stream. Just not, not generally speaking. I already have to listen to my own content again when it's in the editor for however long that I have it in the editor. Uh, Algorant uh, says, oh shit, this is live. Whoa. Yeah, hi. Also, we have a hype train that just concluded. Sweet. I said YouTube needs to be more transparent. And the thing is, is that if they have a moment where they take your channel down for something or they take a stream down for something, then they have an automated system that can timestamp where a problem was. Usually when you have a copyright violation, you actually can have a time uh, a, a timestamp of it that tells you where the issue was. When I took this part of the uh, recording for that video and I made the Mr. Bertram video that I did on my channel, if you remember, there was a cutaway and a change in audio pitch and all that stuff every single time the Mr. Burchant content came on stream, and I missed it once. And when I missed it, I got a little channel violation thing that says, hey, we're not going to publish your content because of copyright. Here's the timestamp of the copyright is. And I'm like, sweet, that's amazing. I'm so glad you can do that for a video. Now, if we can just get that for, you know, live streams too? I'd, I'd really like if we could just do that to live streams as well. That would be fantastic if we could have this for live streams. But as of right now, that's not the case. As of right now, YouTube uh, apparently has live stream stuff in the a very strange, weird area compared to what it used to be. Also, Vice Rhino, thank you very much for the 100-bit cheer. I appreciate it. Catherine says, didn't even know uh, that you streamed on YouTube. App runs better than Twitch on my phone. Yep, yeah, fair enough. Welcome to the stream. Dasa says, we'll get to it when we get to it. Yeah, and they might. I don't know. But I don't know if the training thing is going to help at all. Here's the questions for the training. A creator live streams music videos of their favorite artist without the artist's permission. Yes, this is a violation. Correct. A creator wants to support the premiere of their friend's favorite short film. The creator live streams the trailer after getting permission. No, this isn't a violation. During a live stream, John and Jane discovered many of their subscribers are huge fans of popular science movies. They decided to live stream their favorite scene of the film uninterrupted without any commentary. Wait, hold on a second. So that is a violation, but hold on. Wait a minute. Twitch. Not Twitch in this case. YouTube. YouTube. I didn't stream the Mr. Burcham episode uninterrupted without commentary. I was providing commentary the entire time. That's why it was able to be turned into a video afterwards after a lot of heavy editing. That's really weird, YouTube. Now, hold on. How is this training supposed to actually help me if the thing that your language is obviously leading me to believe isn't a violation... That is the thing I did. Okay, hold on. Christine is a radio host and runs a popular all-day uh, radio live stream on her YouTube channel. She received permission from a Brazilian YouTube artist to stream his songs only in Brazil. She adds the artist's new song to her live stream, which is viewable worldwide. This is, in fact, a violation. 
Marcus, a recent film school graduate, just wrote and produced his first short film. This is the first film. Marcus decides to premiere his film by live streaming. No, this isn't a violation. He owns the content. Andy runs a channel that features videos of his dog. One day, Andy live streams his dog acting excited while watching a popular movie about cats. Andy thinks it's okay that his live stream includes long uninterrupted scenes of the movie because he's not uploading the full film. Uh, this is a violation because Andy is live streaming a movie without permission from the film's right holders. I'd say it is. It so I'd say that it shouldn't be, but it is per YouTube's weird shit. Celine, a professional vocal teacher, live streams music videos by her favorite pop artist. During a live stream, she pauses the video se music several times to describe the different singing techniques. This isn't a violation because she adds educational context to the music videos. Wait a minute. So YouTube, hold on, hold on. Let me get this straight. Now nah, I can actually fucking appeal this. I actually think I will appeal this because according to this, I should actually have been able to do the thing I did with the Mr. Bertram episode. 100%. Because that's what I did during the Mr. Bertram episode. That's so strange. Okay, YouTube. Uh, we're going to close the training. We're going to look at the content. We have we know the policy. We've done this. We're going to submit an appeal. I forgot to... I forgot to write... The, I forgot to write things in the appeal. God damn fucking brain. I see shiny button. I click it. I forgot to actually put in the context of my appeal was that I was providing commentary during the entire thing. It's it's not my fault that they had a long uninterrupted slow-mo scene that took forever to get through. God damn it. Okay. Let's see. Can I no? Appeal submitted. Okay. Well, I guess we'll see how that goes. Fuck me. <laughs> Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. Oopsies. Anyway, um, so if you haven't already, maybe go subscribe to the Necosaurus live channel. Uh, here you'll see constant posts from live streams. Uh, if you are not able to view live streams over on Twitch, but you can view them on YouTube, well, the channel is right here and available for you to watch at, at, at any point. I've made many mistakes. Insert into video tagline here. Hey, I just quickly want to give a thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who keep this show running. YouTube and Twitch are a pretty bumpy ride at the best of times, and the stability a Patreon provides me is worth more than I can say here. I'd also like to thank each and every one of my $20 and up patrons here, and they would be Red Joker, Britzkrieg, Cameron, Dren, Gemshin, Smiling DM, Poundini, Mabity Babity, Naomi, Isaac, Nixie Chan, The Oberon Team, Agamotto, Jordan, Ravi, Juni, Kiratorian, Prisma, all of you, Sagitta, I'm not saying that part, and Starlight. And finally, thank you to everyone else that helps keep this channel alive. While you're here, why not check out another video? And thank you for watching.